I'm standing next to Rhizophora um, species. I don't know which species it is here. It's characterised by um, some some features that are fairly common in plants that are found with their feet in the sea and their, their trunk in the air. Rhizophora mangle has prop roots and stilt roots. These are, these are the stilt roots. These are the prop roots. And they have um, sclerophyllous leaves, so fairly waxy leaves that help them conserve water. Because despite the fact that they've got their feet in the sea, they still have a problem conserving water, fresh water. Now the seeds are interesting. The seeds hang off the tree and they're not really seeds anymore. These are, these, are, these are young plants. So they're growing before they leave the tree. And they have a pointy end, bottom, and then the, the growing end at the top of the acorn. And what happens with these is they float in the sea when they first drop, like this. And as they get a little bit older, the top end becomes hydrophobic, the bottom end becomes hydrophilic. So the whole seed, or the young plant, turns over and bobs around in the sea. And eventually, that young, after a couple of weeks or a couple of days of bobbing around in the sea, that young plant uh, finds lodges somewhere along the coast and the tree starts to grow. This is another species of mangrove, and it's the mangrove that's responsible for producing the pneumatophores that you can see in the sediment around me. One of the problems that mangroves have is that um, they have to get rid of excess salt that they've taken from the water. Things like red mangrove, uh, the earlier species, do this by um, using evapotranspiration, which sucks water through the plant. But species that live slightly higher up on the shore, um, like this one, don't have that option. So there are a few different methods that they use for getting rid of salt from the from the system. One method is to fill old leaves with salt and then they drop the leaves. So that gets rid of the, the salt problem along with tissue that they don't want to have anymore. And some of them have salt glands at the base of the leaf um, on the PTO. And it's still as yet it's unknown how these salt glands work but it's known that they do extrude salt. Another adaptation that's quite common on halophytes, uh, including some mangrove species, quite often they'll have hairy leaves, or the back of the leaf will be hairy. And that means that when salt is extruded from the leaf, it's kept away from the tissue, and that means that the tissue doesn't get burned. Associated with uh, all mangrove species are a variety of uh, animals that live on them, and one of them is the mangrove periwinkle. The mangrove periwinkles are only found um, attached to um, mangroves. Surrounding me on the bottom here, and this is sort of soft mangrove sediment, which is really rich in um, organic material, are bits of wood sticking up. And they're called pneumatophores, and they come from mangroves other than the red mangrove that grow slightly higher up in the, um, the tidal cycle. And they, where each root from the tree comes out and spreads out along the bottom, you get these uh, pneumatophores popping up every now and again from that root. Pneumatophores allow the tree to breathe over more of the tidal cycle so they can get oxygen to the roots. The roots themselves are down in really anoxic, really sort of smelly, smelly mud. I don't know if I can get it. This mud is really sort of full of, you can see it's full of vegetable material so there's, there's no oxygen in there at all and in order to get past that um, lack of oxygen, these trees have got these hollow pneumatophores running along the roots.